Bobby, I wanted to ask you about the offensive line. You guys have had your two biggest games of total offense the past two games, ran for over 300 this past game. Just what's your evaluation of the way the offensive line has been playing during this win streak you guys are on, and especially the, the depth maybe you've created there as you rotate some guys in? I think they've played well. I think uh, they're coming off the ball. They're, they're playing with the right disposition, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, the ability to play into our depth is probably led to some consistency, which was asked earlier in the deal. So that, that certainly has uh, been the case in our offensive line. And then at safety, or at cornerback, sorry, uh, Ronald Jackson got his first start, um, played fast majority of the game. Just your evaluation of how he performed in his first start and how the cornerbacks as a unit held up. Ronald played well in the game. Um, I thought he, he uh, did a nice job. Uh, I think he's a competitive guy who um, he's gotten better and better, which is Generally, the case with guys that, uh, that haven't been with you for a long time as the season wears on, the more they play, the better they play. And uh, what was the second part of that? Just how the cornerbacks as a unit held up in that game. Well, I mean, I'm trying to think how much they went outside. Um, they held up well in the game. I mean, they, they really went after TC. And, Cliff, I know you, you like to give a lot of love to the offensive line on on social media. Um, what what have, what do you like the most about playing behind this offensive line? What, what kind of impresses you the most about them as a group? Just the uh, great you guys have. And Bobby, Trevin Gradney not playing anything you can share about why he didn't play? I win the bill. And then just to confirm because of that unsportsmanlike conduct stuff and Chris Walker getting the second one, he has to sit out the first half of this game this week? That's incorrect. So he's able to play? Yes. The whole game this week? Yes. Okay. Him. Is the understanding of the rule just wrong that since he got two unsportsmanlike conducts? I don't know what the understanding of the rule is. Okay. So what is the rule? What rule? I thought if you get thrown out of a game, you have to sit. If you get thrown out in the second half, you have to sit out the first half of the next game. For an unsportsmanlike? Uh, with the second, second one he got? Cliff kind of shift the offense a little bit. Can you just walk us through what it's like working with uh, Eli and Nick? You guys had over 300 yards combined. And just how much does that open you, both in your running and your passing, when those guys are playing as well as they are lately? Well, it, it definitely takes a lot of the pressure off the offense and seeing those guys make big plays and big runs. Then just Portland State, I know you guys haven't gotten a chance to look at them deeply yet, but just what do you know about their defense? And they've, you know, like Coach mentioned, they've had some good games this year. They've had some ebbs and flows. Just what do you know about those guys on defense? Like Coach said, they're, like we, know they're, we know they're going to be very physical and aggressive, so just going to get in their feelings and just going to see what they're see what they're weak and so. And Bobby, like uh, Portland State has been kind of, they've won some good games and lost some tough games. Just what maybe stands out about them? It's a little, they seem like a little inconsistent, but is there any reason behind that or just what do you kind of see when you look at their team? Yeah, the thing that stands out the most is their physical team and then the fact that they have the ability to control the game with their run game. TC, what's it like, especially you know, in your senior year, to be in this position where you have kind of everything in front of you and you put you guys, you put yourselves in this position? Um, I mean, this, this is our campus for the University of Montana to be in this position, to play big games every weekend, and um, yeah, that's why I came here. This is kind of what I expect.
I just want to ask you about a couple of your captain linebackers. Start with Braxton Hill. Just, what sort of growth have you seen since he came from sort of a redshirt guy, gray shirt even guy, to now being a, a captain, one of your, your top tackles, one of your best players? Yeah, Braxton's done a good job. You know, when he first got here, he had a couple of things going against him. You know, he was a really experienced player, and then he had a bunch of injuries. So, um, really thought he had a bright future. I mentioned that at the time to some uh, friends, high school coaches, they thought I was crazy. But he's developing a really good player. He was such a good overall athlete and high school great basketball player. So, I mean, do you, do you see guys like that having a big time upside? Well, athletic ability helps you have a big upside, certainly. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game where good athletes, whatever the position, have, have probably a higher upside than guys that have lesser athletic ability. And, Certainly, Braxton's a good athlete. He's fast. He's got a great, a great frame. He's a pretty fluid guy. I mean, he's, he's done a nice job becoming a great football player. And where he's from, I mean, there's a lot of small towns in Montana that love sports, but Anaconda loves sports, and they love their guys from there. So, what have you thought of just his ability to represent for that town? Well, you know, just add him to the list of guys from. I mean, Anaconda is a smaller Montana town now. It wasn't always, always that way, but. Uh, you know, guys coming from smaller schools in Montana and, and uh, developing into uh, just terrific football players. Uh, he's done that. Um, obviously, grew, grew up in a family that uh, were very sports-centric, like a lot of kids in, in Montana town, but his family in particular. And uh, you know, I'm just happy for him. He's worked really hard at it. It's great to see him play as well. And Levi Janicaro, I mean, obviously he's a great story as well. I mean, what did you see that you projected him as such a great linebacker after being a high school quarterback? You know, different than Braxton. You know, he didn't have the same frame. Um, probably not quite as uh, explosive as Braxton, but uh, very powerful, good with his hands. Uh, you know, I always like the high school quarterbacks, especially in, in this state. Because you know, if you're the best player, they're gonna put your quarterback or tailback because you're gonna have the ball. And uh, Levi was one of the first guys we talked to when we got we got here in 2018, and, and uh, he's just such a quality guy. He's, he just he does everything right. He's a he's a great leader. He's a great human being, and he's a good football player. Trajan, just your thoughts on, on those two guys, and is this sort of the way that they they lead the defense? No, no, yeah. Said I love both those guys, and they they do a great job in the locker room and on the field. And I love playing with them guys. One more, Bobby. If I could throw out a question from left field, I know with Coach Bobby Knight passing away last week, was he someone you ever got to meet or get to know, or did he have any sort of influence on you or inform you? Coaching wise, in any uh, way, or my dad met him a few times. I never met the man. You know, he liked to come to Montana fly fishing, but he, he was kind of stingy about where he was going. Thanks, everybody.